StarCast 5, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, gearing up to be a huge event you don't want to miss. Amazing stage shows and live wrestling with shows from Black Label Pro, GCW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and of course, Ric Flair's Last Match, which has an amazing lineup of talent from all over the wrestling landscape. Headlined by Ric Flair's Last Match, and you can follow the story leading up to the match over at Ric Flair's Last Match. Com. We've got new episodes Mondays at 6.05 Eastern. For tickets and more information, go to StarCast.com. That NXT Women's Battle Royal, it's not going to win a single vote for Match of the Year. Don't get me wrong. But that was so much better than I expected it to be. And we had a surprise winner, and the crowd loved it, and nobody got hurt, which is the most important thing. So we'll tell you about that as well as the NXT 2.0 review today. So a lot to get into. You can text us 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. We've got a lot of news to get into here today. But I am going to start with a note on NXT 2.0. I realize they say it's my favorite show. It's really not my favorite show. But I think it's fair to say that I enjoy the show more than most. Would that be fair? I think I that, enjoy the that show. That would be fair. Yeah. More than most. Yeah. Uh-huh. But listen, okay? There's, there's, there's being a gimmick and there's being honest, okay? And I don't want to hear anybody try to tell me that that Battle Royal was bad, okay? Was it the match of the year? Absolutely not. But you know what? I've been ridiculing the idea of this Battle Royal for a week now, Okay. There's absolutely no reason that this thing should be any good at all. They have a whole, they have 20 women. Probably, I'd have to look at the whole lineup, but I mean, probably half of them shouldn't even be on TV right now. And they're all in a chaotic match, in which you really, I mean, you could practice to a degree, but it's not like practicing a one-on-one singles match you can choreograph. I mean, there's there's just things everywhere. It's it's chaotic. They have to be thrown over the top rope to the floor. This was a recipe, a recipe for, quite frankly, a lot of material, okay? But, was it Sarah Mato? Who put this together? Whoever put this together needs a a raise immediately, okay? So they had 21 women, actually, because Zoe Stark comes out as the surprise number 21. She hasn't been around since November, when she tore something in her knee, I can't remember which uh, which ligament it was, but she's been out for eight months, and she comes back as the big surprise final person to enter this battle royal. So they do this battle royal, and it is impossibly booked, where the women that should not be on TV, I mean, they're lifted over the top. They're helped the entire way. They got them out of the thing as quickly as possible. And then... All of the women who are capable of doing a battle royal, they had some very clever spots with all of the women that could actually competently work this battle royal. So I'm watching and I'm going, holy smokes, this is like way better than I expected. And then, you know, it comes down to the final four or whatever. And uh, then we've got we've got Tiffany Stratton and Zoe Stark. They're the last two in there. And it wasn't perfect. And the funny thing, actually, is that Tiffany Stratton was, like, an excellent high-level gymnast. And she's so tired she can't do a skin the cat at the end. That was something to see. But then she immediately does a round-off two-back handsprings into the corner. She could pull that off somehow. But anyway, they're going back and forth, and they're throwing each other. And there were some dumb spots, like, you know, Wendy Chu gets thrown over the top, but she lands on her own pillow. But they don't count that as being on the floor which I've argued this many times. It's preposterous. I mean, so anyway, she gets back in the ring, and then she gets thrown out again. So Tiffany Stratton, she gets thrown out, but only one foot touches. They're doing the, you know, back and forth and whatever. And finally, she gets tossed out, and Zoe starts, and everyone starts cheering. She's the winner, blah, blah, blah. And as she's cheering, just like in every Battle Royal, you see the diabolical Cora Jade, who just turned heel, sneak into the ring. And she's down in the corner, and she's ready to pounce. And everyone's like, no! And she runs at Zoe Stark, and Zoe ducks, boom! And she throws her over the top to the floor and eliminates her. It was so good. And then the fans are, like, going crazy because they, like, saw this miracle battle royal. 
And then, you know, everyone's cheering for Zoe Stark. And Zoe Stark, she goes over and she points at Mandy Rose, who's on the whatever. And they point out Mandy Rose and Toxic Attraction are the ones that jumped and injured Zoe Stark eight months ago. Now Zoe Stark has won this battle role. She gets a shot at Mandy Rose for the title. I was like, what the heck? How did they pull this off? How? But I am a man who is willing to say I was wrong. I was wrong. I thought this was going to be horrible. I was just, I was so excited to watch this match. I was just, I was more giddy than I am right now. I'm like, oh man, let's see what's going to happen. I can't just wait to see what Ulyssa Leone does in this match. And dude, <laughs> they pulled it off. It's like, if they would have done this battle royale a hundred times, I'm not sure any of them would have been better than this one. It was good. So anyway, that was the main event of NXT 2.0, and they did it, so good for them. I am nothing if not a fair man. Oh, yeah. I am. And I was not looking forward to that. But I, that's a lie. I was looking forward to the Battle Royal because I thought it was going to be a bunch of knees and elbows and fists flying, back fists in people's faces and a foot catching somebody in the nose as they get tossed over the top rope, but we didn't get that. And the build-up to it, we only heard from a handful of people. The people you would expect to hear from, Nikita Lyons, Lash Legend, those types of people leading into it, Tiffany Stratton. So you knew it was going to be about the bigger names when it all shook out. And it was. Zoe Stark makes her re-debut. And I know probably there are people that have their favorites in NXT, and Zoe Stark may not be one of them. I would say... Give me anybody on that roster and forget about who's got the most WWE potential a year, two, three years down the road, whatever Vince likes. But I'd argue I'd put Zoe Stark against anybody else on that roster for the most part. Put her against She's very Mandy good. Rose. Yeah. Put her against Mandy Rose. I'm taking Mandy Rose. Put her against Cora Jade. I'm taking Zoe Stark. Not because. Wait, you're taking Mandy Rose? You're taking Mandy Cora Rose Jade. over Zoe Stark? Or, excuse me. Zoe Stark. Yes. Yes. I'm taking over Mandy Rose, Zoe yes. Stark. I'm taking over Cora Jade I'll over a lot of people right now. So I don't know if she's going to be the per person that actually ends up dethroning Mandy Rose. It may be Roxy. We'll have to see. But I like the fact that there's another threat to Mandy. And I like the fact that Zoe's back because she is good. We're not going to get EO back. So is Zoe the next best thing? I, I don't know. But with her experience level and the fact that she can work with everybody... It's a plus for me. Yeah, I got one other thing I got to say about this Battle Royale, then I'll talk about the rest of the news. We'll do the full review of the show later. But what was amazing is they they did simplify a lot of things to make sure that nothing went wrong. But there were a couple things that they didn't idiot-proof, and, and they still managed to pull them off. That, I think, was what was the most impressive. Because they did a spot with Alba Fire and Lash Legend. Where oh, yeah. Alba Fire <laughs> goes up. Lash Legend's got her in powerbomb position. Zoe Stark does a Hurricane Rana on Lash Legend over the top rope, and they both tumble to the floor. If they tried that 100 times, I'm not sure they would hit it 99 times. But, man, they hit it, and they it pulled so it off. It was so good, I thought they messed it up. Honest to God, I'm like, was that supposed to happen? That was exactly what was supposed to happen. And once it sinks in for a second, it's like, well, that spot went perfectly. And it's like, it sounds like an insult to Lash Legend, but let's be honest here. It's not her fault. She went out there with no experience whatsoever. And yes, Alba Fire's got a lot of it, but it is very difficult to work with somebody, especially somebody the size of Lash Legend, you know, that you're not used to throwing around and getting in there and, and messing with. And you're supposed to be doing spots with that person who's inexperienced. It's very difficult. We have AEW Dynamite tonight, and we have more added to the show. We've got the barbed wire death match, obviously. Eddie Kingston, Chris Jericho with Jericho Appreciation Society suspended above the ring in a shark cage. We've got Luchasaurus and Christian Cage versus the Varsity Blondes. Brody King will be facing Darby Allen. John Moxley and Wheeler Yuta take on the best friends. Is it true? I think they said the best friends have never lost on Dynamite in a tag team match. Is that hmm. right? I, I find know. that hard to believe, but that's I could be wrong about that. Jade Cargill, Kira Hogan, and Layla Gray will face Athena, Chris Statlander, and Willow Nightingale. And we will have the Swerve in our Glory Championship Celebration. So that is the lineup for Dynamite tonight. And I guess we'll find out who the next challengers will be, I would presume, for Swerve in our Glory. Because some, I mean, maybe they'll just come out and celebrate. 
That'd be new. It's possible. They celebrate. They drop the confetti in the balloons. They go, we did it. And then they go, to the back. And we go to another segment. Ooh, yeah, confetti. Skeptical that that's, that's exactly what's going to happen right there. Hey, Brian. Are you now Comfy Kingston? Are you stealing that uh, nickname from Wendy Chu? Comfy what? Kingston. I miss that. Yes. That's so, because, like, Kofi Kingston always had the spots in the Royal Rumble. That's I what see. it was for Wendy Chu. Yeah. Rusty. Rusty Rose, 10 4 86. <laughs> Dusty. Is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's, uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. Her, and, Herman and Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. Way back then, they had cha- chain barricades. <laughs> And then they had a tag team with Rich Fl- uh, Rick Flair and some more guys, and so that was that. I'm just too- who who <laughs> did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.